Hi everyone and welcome to the first lesson for Introduction to Environmental Data Science. And before we start this lesson, please, please make sure that you have finished all of the required setup instructions. You should have the most um, recent versions of both R and RStudio installed on your computer and should have completed all of these lessons in Happy Git and GitHub for the user, making sure you also have Git installed and you have RStudio and Git talking to each other that you've established your HTTPS um, token. So first things first, let's open up a blank RStudio session. Um, just a brief overview of the RStudio IDE. Um, the console is where code can be written and directly executed. The environment pane is where you'll see um, any environmental objects you've created in your workflows. Um, in the lower right, you have things like your files, um, plots, packages, and one of the most important ones is the help tab. This is where you can, um, as long as you are connected to the internet, you can search any function or package and look up the documentation to that function and see examples. And I use this probably all day, every day. It's very useful. And then to open the fourth panel, let's go to file, new file, R script. And this is called the source panel. This is where scripts and other um, code documents that you are writing and saving will be held. This is where you write all the code to your workflow so you can save it, come back to it, um, but then you can execute the code directly from a script to the console to execute it. So we're actually going to first go back to um, GitHub and create our first GitHub repository. So along with the setup instructions, you should have created your own GitHub account and profile. Um, we are just a brief overview of this course is organized as an GitHub organization, um, which hosts multiple repositories. Um, this front end matter here is called a readme file. Often um, repositories, uh, the front end matter is written up in a readme file. It's essentially all of the um, content you want someone to see as a landing page to your repository. Um, but how we will organize this course is each week will be um, organized in its own repository. And when you look at a single repository, again, here's a readme. All of these course repositories will be organized the same with that week's goals, resources related to that topic, and then the material and assignment um, explanation for that week. Other things to note is the issues tab here. Um, normally when you are either collaborating with others um, in a single repository, you can submit issues, which are things like um, you know, asking someone to fix a bug in the code, etc. For more open source repositories like an R package, um, people submit issues here if they are having a problem with a specific function, um, etc. And the maintainers will um, take note of it and respond to it. So let's get started with creating your own repository on your own GitHub. So you'll see your profile icon up here. You should be signed in. If you go to um, let's go to your repositories. You might not have not have any here yet, but when you want to create a new repository, just click this green new button. And let's create a new repository. Um, for this example, let's just call it something like GitHub R intro. Um, and it's very important to use things like underscores and dashes in between words, you should not have any spaces in repository names. And that's just for general naming conventions related to coding as well. You can add a description if you want, um, make it public, and let's leave all the other defaults and click Create Repository. All right, then what you should see is your username and the new repository name up here. It's empty right now. We didn't even add a readme file, um, but we will get to that later. So next, we want to link this repository to RStudio. So by default, it'll have the HTTPS URL 
chosen. Remember, we didn't do SSH tokens. So click the HTTPS and then copy that link. And now we're gonna go back to our studio. And now what we're going to do here is talk to Git um, in the terminal tab. So by default, it might, if you click on this terminal tab next to console, it might open up a git bash terminal. But just to make sure, you can go to tools, global options, and then terminal down here, and make sure that new terminals open with git bash. So make sure that that is chosen. If you don't see git bash as an option, that means that you haven't installed git properly and should go back to those setup instructions. So click OK. And you can also work in your own separate git bash terminal that should be installed when you install git. And it looks similar, but since we will always be working in R, it's easiest to just use the terminal tab that's in our studio. Okay, so let's for first, um, when you're looking in this git terminal, it shows you right here the directory you are currently working in. Now what I'm going to do is navigate to a folder that I want to save my repository in. Um, so we're going to stop here and I'm going to highly recommend that everyone create a single folder for all of the course content on your local computer. Um, to create a folder, you can use the mkdir command, stands for make directory. Um, but first, say you don't want to um, create this folder in this um, file path. I'm going to navigate to my desktop folder. Um, so if you want to print your full working directory, that function is pwd, and it'll print the full file path. Now I know that my desktop folder is within my ccmothis folder. So to navigate um, backwards and forwards, I have more, if I want to go back a directory, we use the cd command, and then dot dot dash that will go back a directory. So now I'm in my root directory, which is signified by that tilde. If you wanna see all of the files and folders in your current working directory, you can type ls, and depending on what folder you're in, it might print a lot of stuff. So now I see here, all right, I want to go to my desktop folder. And again, you can put this folder wherever you want. In this example, I'm just working in my desktop. So now I wanna to navigate to CD desktop, and often you should be able to autocomplete. All right, if I print on my files again, yes, this is where I want to be. So now within, when you're where you want to be, make a directory called something like, that is course specific. Let's do ESS 523A 2023. All right, now if we ls our files again, you should see this new folder you just created. Now this folder is going to hold all the content for this entire course, um, which will be made of multiple repositories, which are folders um, for each week's lesson. So let's put this repository we just made in this ESS 523A folder. So we want to navigate to ESS 523, tab autocomplete. All right, so now we're working in this folder. Okay, now we're gonna get into some git functions. All of the git functions code starts with git. So we want to essentially copy this repository to our local computer. Git uses the function clone to do that. So we type git clone, and then this is where we want to make sure we've copied this HTTPS URL. And then we paste that full URL. Normally it's something like, oops, uh, github.com slash your username slash the repo name dot git. Now if we hit enter, it'll say cloning into um, and this warning is fine because we haven't added anything to that repository yet. Now, if we list our files in our ESS 523 folder, now we see this new 
um, folder with the same name as our GitHub repository. Great, so now we've created a link between our GitHub repository and our local computer, but now we also want to link it to our studio. So what we do next is create a thing called an R project. R projects are essentially um, Our studio's way of bundling together all of your files for a specific project, all your data, scripts, results, figures, etc. Um, and it's also self-contained and easily portable. And it, by default, your um, project directory, so whatever folder you create this R project in, becomes your working directory. And so to create a new project, right now you probably see this project. Um, button up here in the right hand corner and it probably says none. So we want to create a new project. It might take a second. Um, and there's multiple ways to do this. The lesson plan you will um, work through today has a second way of doing this, but for this example, we're going to click on existing directory because we want to link it to the GitHub R intro folder we just copied to our local computer. So we want to browse to that. Let's see, key in this folder. And so click your GitHub R intro folder. Open, and then I would check open in a new session and click create project. This might take a second. Okay, so we see a few things here. Um, first, in your console, it will always print your current working directory at the top here. So we see in this new R project, now it has a name, it doesn't say project none. Um, our working directory is our ESS folder and the GitHub R intro repo we just created. So this is now the folder we are working in. We also see in our files, um, it automatically goes to this working directory and we now have two new things, a git ignore file, um, which you don't have to worry about too much right now, and a um, dot our project file with the same name as our folder slash github repo. Um, so this our project file is how you will always open the our project associated with this um, folder or repo. Um, and then third we now see this git tab up here. Um, so this is important if you don't see this git tab that means you probably aren't um, properly connecting our studio and git. Um, but what this Git tab does is it shows all of your current um, untracked files, so anything that you have added or changed uh, locally that is not currently up on your GitHub uh, remote repository. Um, and we'll go through uh, the rest of this lesson about how you can commit and push your changes to GitHub. Um, but I sometimes like to just keep this tab open to keep track of all the files that I um, have it pushed to GitHub, and I make sure by the end of the day that this is clean. I've um, tracked and committed all of my changes to GitHub. And just an example of how these R project files work, you can exit out of this session. I'll exit out of too quick. Um, and now navigate to that folder, our ESS folder, GitHub R intro, and if you double click on this R project file, it will open that R project R studio session. So that is normally how you will navigate to your R project instead of opening R studio and then navigating to your project from there. This is probably the easiest way. Okay. So after all that, let's get coding. So we're going to create some code today. Um, save our changes and then push it to our new GitHub repository. So let's create um, a new script. What we're going to do first is create a 
um, setup script that you will be using probably throughout the rest of this course. Um, this is things, normally setup scripts are meant to uh, load in all of the necessary R packages you need, and sometimes other things like loading in data sets, uh, setting parameters, etc. So you can click either File New or this um, little white page with the green plus sign. Let's create a new R script. Okay, before doing anything, let's save this. And also a nice thing when you go to save file, it automatically navigates to your R project directory. And let's just call this setup. Okay, so now we have this new script called setup. Now before we start um, coding in this script, um, we need to walk through a few basics like functions and R packages, and then we're going to install a bunch of R packages using a custom function. Um, so R has a lot of built-in functions. Basically, functions are chunks of code that someone else has already wrote and put together um, for other people to use. Um, some really basic functions that um, come preloaded with R are some mathematical functions like log, um, we create the average of, let's say, a range of numbers, which we can um, specify with a colon. Um, we can also use a concatenate function, which is just the letter C. Um, within that, we can string together multiple things. We can string together numbers, we can string together um, characters, which we'll get into data types in a second. Um, there's also other functions, like print is a common one that will print water. <laughs> Hello world. Um, paste is one that I use all the time, and it will paste together um, whatever string of characters you want, and you can specify what you want to separate those words with. Let's say we want to separate it with a dash, and then it will paste hello and world separated by a dash. So these are all some base R functions. Now, the beauty of R is there are thousands and thousands of packages that other programmers have written a bunch of additional functions that you can um, install the package for, and then you can use those functions as well. Um, if you want to see an example of the code on the back end, so say we want to see what code puts together the mean function, we can just type mean. To install packages, we use the function install.packages, and then you must put the package name in quotations. And then after installing a package, you can load it into your session using the library function. Um, additionally, you don't necessarily always have to load it in through the library. Um, once you've installed a package, you only need to install it once, unless you need to update it or you're working on a different computer. Once a package is installed on that computer, you shouldn't have to do it again. But you need to tell your R session when you want to use that package. Um, sometimes you can use, let's say I want to use the Terra package. Um, so I haven't loaded Terra into this R session yet, but I can still use its functions by using the package name and then this double colon. And now I can use any of the Terra functions like extract, um, extent, etc. So this is why sometimes you might see that double colon. That's what it's doing. Um, another reason is sometimes there are multiple packages that have the same function name. Um, and you need to specify, I want to use this function from that package. Um, otherwise, one might overwrite the other and you'll get an error and wonder why. It's because it's using the wrong function. Okay, so 
So going back up to our script here, um, what we're going to do is use this package load function, which is actually something um, I wrote, but I use it at the beginning of almost all um, workflows. And what it does is um, checks on your local system. Do you have this package installed? If not, it will install it and then load in the library. Or if you already have it installed, then it'll just load it in with the library function. Um, so you'll see this function on today's lesson plan. I'm just going to copy and paste it over. Um, a note on functions that I think confuses people sometimes. So in my script, I now have this function. You will go through how to write custom functions later on in this course, um, but basically you give the function a name with the assignment operator, and then with function, um, this one just has one argument, x, which will be the package name you want to give it. And then within brackets, um, you tell it what to do with that object x. And so when we want to um, execute a function, it won't print anything down in the console, but now we see in our environment under the functions tab, we now have this package load function. Okay, so now we need to give it a um, package name or actually a string of packages because we will be using a lot throughout this course um, to install and load. So I'm also going to copy this over from today's lesson plan because spelling is very important. If you miss a single letter or accidentally capitalize something, it won't recognize it and it won't install it. Um, so you can get this string of packages from today's lesson. And these are all the ones we need for today and additional lessons throughout um, this course. We will probably be installing and loading in more and more packages. So this setup script is something you can keep and just keep just adding to, saving, and you can move it and copy it across all the repositories you're working in. Um, so we're again, we're using this concatenate function C to create a string of package names. So now we have packages. This is a character string, one through nine. We gave it nine packages to load. And so now we can give packages to our package load function. And we're going to execute that. Now, if you don't have any of these packages installed, this might take um, a little bit of time. So in the meantime, make sure you save your setup script. And also note, if you go to your Git tab, you'll see that now we have this setup R script that is untracked. We haven't pushed it to GitHub yet. Okay, so we made our first script. Now we're going to work and learn more about our markdown. So throughout this course, pretty much every week, you will be working in our markdown documents that we've um, created the bones for, but you will work through um, on your own and answer questions um, and exercises throughout the lesson. We'll leave like um, chunks of code you need to finish or fix or exercises you need to complete, etc. So our markdown is essentially R's um, form of coding notebook, if you're familiar with Jupyter Notebook, um, where it's a mix of both text and code. Um, and it allows you to uh, render these documents to nicely formatted reports, like an HTML document, Word, um, PDF, etc. So let's create an R Markdown document. Go to File, New File, and R Markdown. Now, something to note, you might have heard about Cordo. Um, Cordo is kind of the uh, up and coming version of R Markdown, um, but instead of being an R package, um, it is its own separate software. So you can use it uh, across different programming languages like R, Python, Observable, Julia, etc. cetera. Um, we are not using it for this course because it's still relatively new. Um, it's pretty fully functioning, but there's just some bugs here and there. Um, since it's such a new software, we are going to stick to R Markdown. R Markdown isn't going anywhere, it's still maintained, um, and it's still a really great tool. 
Um, but just a note, if you see Cordo, um, now with the most recent version of RStudio, it automatically installs a version of Quarto as well. So you can um, use it directly from RStudio. So back to our markdown, um, it will open up this panel here. Um, you can give it a title, let's call it GitHub R intro again, or whatever you want to call it. It will probably fill in your name and date. Um, you can change the date. I often click use current date when rendering document, so it updates with the current date whenever I add new changes to it. Um, and then you can choose what format you want to output it as. Um, throughout this course, we'll likely be using HTML the most, so you can keep that um, default there. So now we click OK, and then it creates kind of a template document for us. Um, at the top within these three dashes here, this is called a YAML header. This is where you set parameters for your R Markdown document. Um, you shouldn't really have to worry about this, um, but it will autofill your title, um, author, date, and output format, etc. But there are a lot of other uh, arguments you can add to this YAML header. And then you'll see that um, it is separated by these code chunks and text. Um, so code gets put in these chunks, um, which is separated by these three dashes. And then within the brackets at the top, you can set um, code chunk parameters, um, which again, we won't get into too much. Mainly the main thing you just need to know is that code is, has to be within its own chunk. And then you can execute, execute um, individual chunks by clicking this green button here. And now a new thing to note about um, our studio is it has newer versions have this visual editor, which allows you to um, essentially see a kind of visual preview of your R Markdown document. When we go back to the source, this is actually just raw Markdown code. Um, but visual just looks like basically a preview of what your rendered document will look like. Um, and it has a lot of new functions that allow you to do a lot in here and not really need to know any Markdown um, syntax at all. You can make things bold, italicize, you can add code, um, you can specify header levels, bullet points, numbering. You can even insert URL links and images, um, tables, etc. cetera. Um, but for today's example, this R Markdown document you are going to be um, using to work through uh, today's lesson plan. So you can actually delete all of this extra stuff. Um, and if you ever want to just open a empty R Markdown document instead of this outline, that was an option when it was showing the um, settings such as title and date, etc. You can choose to just open a blank document. Okay, so first we are going to um, pretty much always start our uh, workflows with reading in that setup script. We want to install and load all the R packages that we need. So to create a new chunk, you can either do this green C plus sign, and you can also choose different languages. We'll always be using R. Um, and then to run or execute an entire script, we use the function source. And within source, we give it the file path to the script we want to um, execute. In this case, it should be in our root uh, project directory, and then we just give it the name and file extension. And now if we run this, likely nothing won't be printed because we already um, actually ran this package load function, but sometimes it might print the output below, um, such as some messages and warnings related to the package um, installation and loading. Okay, so now we can actually get coding in R. Um, first things first, let's save this R Markdown document. Um, you can just save it in the root project directory. Um, 
call it whatever you want. Maybe we'll call it um, we'll call it our R basics lesson. Okay, so when we're working through our markdown documents, um, outside of code chunks, you can leave notes and text, etc. Um, so first, we are going to um, work through some of these R fundamental fundamentals with um, the penguins data. And so this is a data set kind of designed for um, learning R. And we installed this penguins data set with the penguins package. Um, we will learn later there are a lot of R packages that either come um, with data sets preloaded when you install the package or they um, have API wrappers that allow you to call in different data sets from various databases, etc. So with our penguins data, we can read that into our session by using data function. Penguins is what it's called. If we run that, now we see penguins and penguins raw. Now it's not totally entered into our environment yet. We need to wait for it to load a second and there it is. So first thing generally when you're working with um, new data, you want to inspect it. You want to know what kind of variables are there, how large is it, etc. In the environment pane, it gives you um, a brief overview, tells you how many observations or rows um, and how many variables. If you want to, if it's in a spreadsheet format, you can click this little spreadsheet icon and it actually opens it up as a tab in the source panel that in spreadsheet format, kind of like an Excel format. You can filter things out with the search bar, you can sort by different columns um, and actually yeah, filter out here, etc. Um, and then if you want to print it to your console, it'll show a preview of the data, give you the first few rows, um, and in this case, it tells you the type of data. Um, this is called a tibble. A tibble is a fancy form of data frame um, used in the tidyverse. Uh, now, today's lesson gives you some um, background on base R versus the tidyverse, so you should definitely read through all of that. Um, but tidyverse is essentially a group of packages that all have the same um, kind of style, grammar format, etc., and they all work really well together and have a suite of functions that allow you to wrangle, manipulate, um, visualize, and share data. And they all work really well together and they're all very uh, efficient functions as well. So when we look at this, we see this is a what's called a data frame or a tibble, a fancy data frame. It is organized by um, rows and named variable columns. Um, within these columns, the header here gives us a hint of the data type in that column. Um, data frames generally have um, each column needs to consist of the same data type. Data types in R, um, you can see more specifics again in this uh, written up lesson plan, but they can be a character, which is like a word, um, a number, an integer, integer, which is numeric, but it's whole integers, logical, which is true, false, um, and complex numbers, which are complex numbers with real and imaginary parts. Probably won't deal with those much in this class. Um, all these data types can be combined to form data structures. Um, data, ours, ours main data structures include vectors, um, which are one dimensional and all must be of the same data type. We already created a character vector, our packages, um, and it tells us this is a character because they are all characters um, and it tells us there's nine of them, one through nine. This is one dimensional. A list um, is a one dimensional object, but you can combine multiple data types. You can have a list 
where the first element is a data frame, second is a number, um, et cetera. A, a matrix is a two-dimensional, it's made up of rows and columns, um, but every single uh, row and column value must be of the same data type, which is different from a data frame where columns themselves have to be the same data type, but you can have different data types amongst columns. You can have a numeric column, you can have a character column, integer column, etc. like we see here in the penguins data. Where in a matrix, every single cell would have to be the same data um, type, either all numbers, all characters, etc. Okay, so to inspect um, your data types, I'm going to be working down in the console a little bit here. So to inspect the data type, um, you can use the function class. Say we want to know what um, format our penguins data is. And it will tell us a few things. It's a data frame, but it's also a tibble, which is TBL. It's a tibble data frame. Um, so again, a tibble is just a fancy form of a data frame. Um, if we want to look at what format is our packages, it is a character vector. Um, another useful function is the STR, which you can think of as standing for structure. So you want to know the structure of our penguins data. This gives us a little header info at the top, how large it is, but then it breaks down each individual um, column or variable name and tells us, okay, this is a factor with three levels and shows the first few. Um, this is a numeric vector ranging from um, one to th 344 rows, et cetera. So, um, what you are going to do today is actually work through all of the code on your own instead of watching me do it on this video. So if you go back to our um, repository on the GitHub organization for this week, um, this is the first lesson, Intro Basics. And so through this lesson plan, the beginning is kind of all the stuff I just went through. Um, but later on, we get into more of this code down in the explore section. Um, so what we want you to do for this class period is work through this code, explore different data types, um, learn how to index, and learn more about tidyverse packages. And throughout these sections, um, there will be exercises that we recommend you work through. Um, and just kind of experiment on your own, but you will not be graded this week on these exercises. In the future, you will be graded on these exercises. Um, but really, today's assignment is um, that you created this repository, you wrote a little bit of code, and worked through um, committing and pushing these changes to GitHub. So make sure everything is saved. It's nice these files will light up blue when there's an unsaved one, so you can make sure that everything is saved. Um, and now we see in our Git pane, we have all these files we haven't committed to our repository yet. So let's work through that. We're going to go back to the terminal tab and we're going to do a few functions here and we're going to commit and push our uh, file changes from this terminal. So um, if we run the function git status, it prints essentially what we see in this Git tab here. Everything in red is a file that is untracked and not committed yet. Um, so that is a sign that you do want to commit it. The process of working in Git is add, commit, push. Um, first, you need to add or stage the files that you want to push. In this case, we want all of them. Um, so you could either do git add and list the individual file names. If you want to add everything, you just use the period. And if you do that, nothing is probably printed out, but you can do git status now. Now everything is green. It says new file, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're not done yet. Now it says changes to be committed, so we're ready to commit. To commit, we do git 
commit. And now this one has the second step. We do dash M followed by, in quotations, a commit message. These are normally short but specific enough that you are telling yourself and your collaborators what this um, bunch of commit committed files did. Um, so for this example, we'll just say, um, since this is our first commit to the repo, we'll say init repo files or something like that. And hit enter. All right, so now, um, depending on how your settings are, mine are a little weird on this computer, um, but now if we do git status again, um, it'll say there's nothing to commit, working tree clean. All right, so the last step you have to do is push. So you should be able to just type git push. And it'll print some info about what files were changed, how many lines, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then it'll say to the repo that it pushed to. So now go back and look for um, that repo, the repo we created today. And now you see all of the files that you just pushed. And it'll show the commit message um, and how long ago you pushed it. So for today and tomorrow, or second lesson, um, you will be working through these lesson plans um, and adding code to your R Markdown document, any plots that you make, any notes you wanna make, etc. cetera. Um, again, you won't be graded on the actual content of um, this code you're writing. This is more of just an exploratory week, um, getting your feet wet in the R language, working in R Markdown files, and then pushing these changes to GitHub. So for um, this week's assignment, there will be um, the assignment posted in the issues tab. It's not there quite yet. Um, but what everyone of you will do is um, paste this link to the repository you made for this week um, and paste it in response to the assignment issue of this week one repository. So you'll mainly just be graded on, did you create this repo following along the necessary steps um, and see if you have, you know, again, we're not grading these markdown documents, but did you create them? Did you write some code? Did you actually work through um, the steps of the lesson plans, etc.? And that is about all you need for this lesson. Um, in the next one for this week, I'm gonna introduce you to working in spatial data types, um, and you'll be working through some of those exercises as well.